In estimating the definite integral of cosine four x from negative one to four using the trapezoid rule with n equals ten, we can estimate the error involved in the approximation using the error bounds formula, which is given here below. The error is going to be less than or equal to the quantity b minus a cubed, where a and b are the limits of integration, divided by 12n squared times the absolute value of the maximum of the second derivative function on the closed interval from a to b. So to determine this maximum function value on the closed interval, we can either analyze the graph of the second derivative function on this interval, or we can find the critical numbers and then evaluate the second derivative function and the critical numbers as well as the endpoints because we do have a closed interval. So let's begin to set this up. The error is going to be less than or equal to, we'll have the quantity b minus a cubed, where a is negative one and b is four, so we'll have the quantity four minus negative one cubed divided by twelve n squared, where n is given as ten, and then times the absolute value of the maximum of the second derivative function on the closed interval from negative one to four. So let's go find this maximum function value on the next slide, and then we'll come back and finish this calculation. So starting with the integrand function, f of x equals cosine four x, we want to find the second derivative, so we'll first find the first derivative. To find the derivative of cosine four x, we have to apply the chain rule. So our derivative will be negative sine four x times four, or negative four sine four x. And now the second derivative would be equal to negative four times the derivative of sine four x, which would be negative four cosine four x times four, or negative sixteen cosine four x. Now we want to find the maximum function value of our second derivative function on the closed interval from negative one to four. So what we could do is find the derivative of this function, which would be the third derivative, set it equal to zero and solve to find the critical numbers, and then evaluate the function of the critical numbers and the endpoints to determine the maximum function value. But in this case, we should recognize that the graph of our second derivative function would have an amplitude of sixteen so in this case, let's just analyze the graph of our second derivative function to determine the maximum function value on this closed interval. So here's the graph of our second derivative function. And again, because we have an amplitude of sixteen, we can easily verify the maximum function value on the closed interval from negative one to four would be positive sixteen, which actually occurs four times over this interval here, 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 and here. Notice f of negative one would be some value here less than twelve, and f of four would be some value here less than sixteen. So again, this graph verifies that the absolute value of the maximum function value of our second derivative function on this closed interval is sixteen. So going back to our error calculation, we can now substitute sixteen for this maximum function value. So we'd have the error is less than or equal to, this would be five cubed or one hundred twenty-five, divided by, this would be twelve times one hundred or one thousand two hundred, again times sixteen, which would give us two thousand, divided by one thousand two hundred. These two have a common factor of four hundred. So this simplifies nicely to five thirds. So what we've discovered is when using the trapezoid rule to evaluate this definite integral when n equals ten, the error will be less than or equal to five thirds. 
Now even though the directions do say keep at least two decimal places accuracy, since we have the exact value here, there's no reason to convert this to a rounded decimal. Let's go ahead and leave this as the error is less than or equal to five-thirds. I hope you found this explanation helpful.